Good morning and thanks for joining us today. My name is Kyle Whitaker and I'm the Apprenticeship Project Manager for the Iowa Economic Development Authority. We chose today's date for the webinar because we're celebrating National Apprenticeship Week and felt it was the perfect opportunity to share how registered apprenticeship works and also to hear from some experts who have chosen registered apprenticeship as a workforce development tool. Over the next hour, you'll be hearing from several state of Iowa and industry experts and we'll also view a short video before wrapping up with the Q&A session. Uh, we do have closed captioning available today with details on how to activate that in the chat box. And also feel free to use the Q&A function in Zoom to submit any questions that you may have along the way. Now I'd like to introduce our first speaker. Governor Kim Reynolds was elected to a full term on November 6, 2018. She is a fifth generation Iowan who grew up in a working class family in St. Charles. Governor Reynolds believes Iowa is the best place in America to live and wants to preserve that lifestyle and quality of life for generations to come. Among her top priorities as a governor are investing in education and also in job training. To do that, she created the Future Ready Iowa Initiative, bringing industry leaders and educators together to train a 21st century workforce. Her first budget also included historic investments into K through 12 education. Governor Reynolds believes that these policies are creating an environment for good paying jobs and increased opportunities for every single Iowan. It is now my honor to welcome Governor Kim Reynolds for her comments. Well, good morning and thank you, Kyle, for that very nice introduction. I really appreciate it. And I really appreciate all the school districts, the community uh, de development directors and businesses that are taking the time to participate in the webinar to learn more about our registered apprenticeship programs and what I believe are tremendous opportunities and how appropriate that you're doing this during National Apprenticeship Week. Also, I wanna say thanks, I'm not gonna be able to stay on. So um, I wanna say thanks to the many presenters that will share firsthand the success that we're seeing uh, with the registered apprenticeship program. You know, I would be remiss if I wouldn't say that 2020 has been a challenging year for all of us. Uh, but what I love about Iowans is in the face of adversity, uh, they step up and they step in. And even though we're experiencing an increasing community spread across our state, we will get through this. And Iowa is really positioned well to recover better and stronger than ever. And as I traveled the state, even recently, one of the biggest challenges I continue to hear is a workforce. But it's also, and that's what I think excites me, is it's one of our biggest opportunities for Iowans. Uh, as Kyle said, our, my administration is committed to building a job-ready workforce by really connecting Iowans to careers and preparing our next generation of workers. As we all know, workforce development doesn't happen in a vacuum. It requires continually aligning resources and opportunities. And really, that's what I love about the Registered Apprenticeship Program. It does that. It is a partnership between communities, school districts, employers, and community colleges. Uh, I think young Iowans especially are realizing uh, today that there are many paths to great careers, and those careers exist in all four corners of our state. The Registered Apprenticeship um, Program, it's, it's a proven approach um, that prepares students and Iowans for rewarding careers. It meets employers' needs by recruiting, ret retaining, and training skilled workers, and, it's doing, and in doing so, it's strengthening our communities. I'm proud to say that in just a few uh, short years since we started the Registered Apprenticeship Program in high schools, we have over 34 high schools uh, participating, over 100 apprentices, apprentices, and over um, a dozen that are in the process of getting started. We have more than 65 businesses that are participating in programs like welding, health sciences, engineering, and information technology. And what really excites me as I have an opportunity to travel to these high schools and talk with the students is just the incredible engagement of the students, how much they appreciate the opportunity and how they found their passion to really engage. Uh, and the good news is then we keep them in the community. Juniors and seniors work towards earning nationally recognized apprenticeship cert certification. And also many of them are earning uh, college credits that are leading to post-secondary degrees. They also, which is incredible, they earn a, a decent wage while they're learning a skill that they have an interest in. And again, they're building relationships with our local businesses and communities. We have funding in place, um, the Registered Apprenticeship Development Fund. I know you've got a panel that's gonna talk about that later. But what I wanna say is that Iowa, uh, want, the state wants to be a partner uh, in expanding these opportunities with high schools and businesses across the state. 
You know, our workforce is continually impacted by innovation and technology. So we need an educational system that adapts to those changes. And truly my hope is that is that every school district in Iowa um, provides the opportunity for a registered apprenticeship program and it could be included as one of their work-based learning options. Again, it creates tremendous opportunities for our stu students. It helps them start um, careers early and for employers, it helps them build a robust talent pipeline locally. So whether you're a high school administrator, a business owner, or an economic development leader, I think that this meeting and this webinar is a perfect chance to explore how you can plug in, and it truly is that easy, to the registered apprenticeship model and meet the needs of your um, community. And as Kyle said, it aligns perfectly with STEM, work-based learning, and our Future Ready IO initiative. So it's taken a lot of innovation and collaboration and hard work to make these programs possible. And so I wanna take this moment also to just uh, to commend Director Townsend and Director Durham and of course their teams for their incredible hard work in these programs. So thanks again for being on today, for participating and for helping us build a stronger tomorrow. So thanks everyone, have a great webinar. And now it is, I think my pleasure to introduce one of those directors that has really been a driver in making this happen. She is just, I think maybe, as much or more passionate than I am about this because she knows that it works and she's seeing the impact that it's having on Iowans across the state. So I hope I am throwing it to Director Townsend because that's what my note said. You are, thank you so much, Governor Reynolds. Thanks for joining us and your comments. You're, you continue to be the inspiration for this work. So thank you. Thanks everyone, uh, have I, a great I, webinar. Bye. Well, I appreciate the opportunity just to say to all of you, thank you for joining us at uh, for this webinar and in celebration of National Apprenticeship Week. We are so lucky in Iowa because the Iowa employers recognize the value of registered apprenticeship programs in growing their workforce. We have seen, even in the middle of a pandemic, Iowa growing new programs at a rate that most states can only dream about. And I'm talking about states that have triple quadruple or 10 times our population. But that just is a demonstration of how forward leaning and forward thinking our employers are when they come to uh, thinking about how they're gonna develop their current workforce. And that's through registered apprenticeship and earn and learn programs. We are excited to have 34 high schools with programs and we look forward to the time when we have even I would love to have every school district have one, at least one registered apprenticeship program available to high school students. And that's certainly gonna be the goal that we pursue uh, moving forward. <clears throat> Excuse me. I also wanna commend our team, uh, Kyle and Amy and all the team at IDEA and IWD for the work they do. For the business marketing specialists at IWD who are out there every day talking to employers about how registered apprenticeship programs can benefit them helping them get them get set up. We have a great partnership with Greer Sisson and her, excuse me, the Office of Apprenticeship here in Des Moines. Greer, as you all know, is a force of nature and I think single-handedly launched Iowa into the registered apprenticeship stratosphere. So we owe her a great debt of gratitude and thanks for her hard work. And we hope that we can continue to accelerate that work moving forward. If you haven't heard, we were able to give out uh, an award about a little over $10 million recently in coronavirus relief fund money to expand and create registered apprenticeship programs. Uh, in Iowa, we awarded funds to employers, to unions, to post-secondary institutions, to training providers, to high schools that would help them cover the cost of either creating or expanding registered apprenticeship programs. We had lots of different programs, primarily in high demand occupations that we um, are supporting, but I am excited to see the work that we're gonna, that's gonna come out of that. And I think it's gonna position Iowa really well uh, moving forward to just continue this kind of um, exponential growth that we've seen in registered apprenticeships. So thank you all for joining. Uh, I would say if you have any questions, or want more information or need assistance with registered apprenticeship programs, please reach out to the teams that you're gonna to meet today. They are the experts. They are very passionate about doing this work and they will help you get to where you need to be to use this as a tool uh, to grow your workforce. So 
Thank you for the opportunity, Amy and Kyle, and I'll turn it back over to you. Thank you very much, Director Townsend. As we get into, um, we had a great overview from the governor and from Director Townsend. Thank you very much. Um, let's get into the five components of registered apprenticeship programs. Um, this is basically how do you set up a registered apprenticeship program? We want to give you the nuts and bolts, and then we want to hear from the experts. So every registered apprenticeship program has five components of the program. The first component is the employer has to be involved. This is a program that's driven by employers for employers and um, the employer is, is ultimately the foundation of every single program. They must have um, the direct involvement with the creation and they must provide the on the job learning. We'll go over a little bit about what on the job learning is next. That's the second component. On the job learning has to be paid. So that's a little bit of a difference of other work-based learning initiatives and it has to be structured. When we say structured, there are um, different tasks and components that are listed within each given, um, each job competency of the registered apprenticeship occupation. It's a minimum of 2000 hours every year of the program. A, year, um, a program could take one to five years in length depending on the occupation. And we can give you that information as what industry has stated um, is how long a program has to last. Um, that also the program is supervised. That means that there's a one-to-one -one mentor uh, rate uh, most, in most programs. And the on-the-job learning is done about 80% of the program. So that individual, that apprentice is learning by the mentor, by the uh, employer 80% of the time. The third component is the job related education instruction or what's called the classroom component. That classroom component is 144 hours of each year of the apprenticeship program and it's directly related to the occupation. So you're not taking a, a, a art history class if you're going into welding. You are really looking at exactly what is uh, needed for that given occupation in order for you to learn the theory and the practicality of that occupation. Um, that, that related training instruction can be put at the forefront of the program or what's called parallel or what's called front loaded. It could be parallel that it's going on at the same time, or it could be segmented that you're going to class for a week and then going to work for three weeks. It all depends on what the, or what the occupation needs along with what the employer needs. And you'll hear a little bit um, more in the, in the future on our three experts on how they, how they structure their program. The fourth component is rewards for skills gain. That means that you're getting paid a wage, you're getting paid to learn, you're getting um, that pay increase throughout the timing of your program. So you have to have at least one wage increase during your program, but most programs have multiple wage increases throughout the program until the end of your registered apprenticeship program that you're at that mentor or that skilled worker wage. The last component of a registered apprenticeship program, but not the least, is the National Occupational Credential. This is a post-secondary credential that shows that there's job proficiency and that industry certifies that you are proficient within that given occupation. This National Occupational Credential can be taken across uh, state lines um, in order for you to get another job in another state, but hopefully we want you to stay in the state of Iowa and give your um, fruitfulness of your uh, training to your employer that you've received the National Occupational Credential with. So that, that is a nutshell of what the five components are. Now I'm going to uh, kick it over to Natalie from Unity Point to give you additional information about their Register Apprenticeship Program. Thank you, Amy. So yeah, so I'm Natalie McNaught and I'm with Unity Point Health Des Moines. I am currently the retention specialist there. I've been with the organization for about 20 years, but just in my role since August. Uh, my role is to help um, support and coordinate um, services and different programs out there to help um, retain, develop, and then move our entry-level employees up into sustainable wages. So then that means I have the privilege of working with our apprenticeship programs. So next slide, please. So a little bit about Unity Point Health Des Moines. We are consists of um, Iowa Methodist Medical Center, uh, Blank Children's Hospital, John Stoddard Cancer Center, Iowa Lutheran Hospital, Methodist West, Ireley Ball Mental Health Services, and then we have clinics in the Des Moines area as well. And then Grinnell Regional Medical Center is also part of Unity Point Health Des Moines. So next slide, please. 
So why apprenticeships? In 2018, we started to look at apprenticeship programs, maybe to help recruit for some of our hard to fill positions or those positions maybe that had a high turnover rate. Our first program started in 2019 and we chose apprenticeship programs because we felt when an organization invests in their team members, then those team members will recognize that and in turn invest in their organization. So our hope is that they're gonna stay longer, their productivity is going to increase. And then I also believe that our current employees, um, so these apprentice apprentices are going to be some of our best recruiters because they're going to be out there telling their friends or family or people that they meet, you know, Unity Point Health Des Moines is such a great organization. They invested in me as an apprentice um, and they get to go to school with little um, to no debt at the end of it as well. So as far as how we recruit, recruit for our apprenticeship programs, um, we take both internal and external candidates, uh, depending on the program. So we have an internal weekly newsletter that goes out to all of our employees. So that's how they learn about it. We also send information to our hiring leaders and they will share that information with their team members, maybe at a team huddle or post information in their common areas like break rooms. We also, for external candidates, we have relationships with Iowa Workforce Development that we can advertise with, Central Iowa Works, um, you know, obviously I said like word of mouth from our own team members and um, some of the schools in the area as well. Next slide. So now I'm going to talk a little bit about our programs that we do offer. So this first one is a certified medical assistant, or you can hear it called a CMA as well. And these are the people that you will see when you go to a doctor's office. So they work in a clinic setting and they work alongside the physician and other nurses to care for those patients. So they're going to be the ones to um, take your weight when you go to the doctor that we all love to have done, um, your vitals. Um, and then when they'll take you back to the room and they'll be the ones to ask all those questions for you um, as well. This is a two-year program and classes are usually held at DMAC. And we started this program, I think it was December of 2019 and we've had about 28 participants so far. The next Des Moines cohort is going to start summer of 2021. But what's really cool is this fall, we started a program in Cedar Rapids. So our CMA apprenticeship program is expanding. Next slide. So um, this program is our Certified Nursing Assistant, or a CNA. To make it really confusing, we have a CNA and a CMA, <laughs> so we have to really enunciate. <laughs> this helps to build our patient care tech pipeline. This position works under the supervision of a registered nurse on our nursing floors in the hospitals to help patients with things um, associated with activities of daily living. So that would be anything um, helping to bathe the patient, dressing, feeding, helping them with mobility, getting up and moving around, and then taking their vitals. This is a 75 hour program for the basic CNA and 45 hours are gonna be spent in the classroom and then an additional 30 will be in the clinical setting. And we have classes that are taken at DMAC or at Signature Health. We have had 36 registered so far and we are starting another cohort in January and we're having an interview day for that tomorrow. So the beginning of this month, the past two weeks, I've been doing phone interviews and we're gonna be selecting candidates tomorrow after interviews. So next slide, please. And then the last one I'll talk about is our operations engineer position. So these, uh, this position is responsible for all the operations and maintenance of our mechanical and electrical equipment throughout all of our facilities. This is a four-year program. Participants get on-the-job training as well as taking classes through DMAC. This program started in the fall of 2019. We hire two candidates per year, so we have four students in the program. And this one we really started because we recognize that the current workforce we have is probably projected to retire in the next three to five years. And most of those team members have 30 plus years of experience with our 
facilities. And so that would be a lot of knowledge leaving the organization. So it's great to have those um, seasoned employees be helping the new ones who come in um, through that apprenticeship program and passing on that knowledge before they leave. Um, next slide. So thank you for letting me review uh, our programs. Again, I really think apprenticeships are a win-win for both the participant and the organization. So like I said, the organization gets skilled workers and then the participants will get an education at low to no cost. So again, uh, I'll be happy to answer any questions at the end of the hour. And so next up we have Tyler Mosier from Van Wall Equipment. All right, thank you, Natalie. Uh, like Nana said, my name is Tyler Mosier. I'm our Technician Program Development and Training Coordinator for Van Wall Equipment. I've been with Van Wall for almost three years. It'll be three years next month. And uh, my job is to really come in and get our and the apprentices into the Ag Tech program and, and get them trained up with all of the senior technicians and then start working for us at all of our locations and then um, responsible also for our, uh, all of our other employees for their training to make sure we're staying up to date with John Deere uh, credentials, our power sports and um, uh, forklifts and everything else that we sell and service. So today I'll talk to you a little about um, the, our Van Wall, the John Deere Ag Tech program, how we recruit um, our registered apprenticeship program, the benefits of the registered apprenticeship program uh, for us. So a little about Van Wall, we have around 550 employees at 28 locations in four states. And out of those 28 locations, 19 of those are ag related. Now we look to sponsor uh, at least one apprentice at every location every single year and some locations can take uh, two of them. So we look to sponsor anywhere between um, about 18 to 22 apprentices every single year to go to the ag tech program um, at our locations to grow our, our workforce. Uh, we need technicians at every location. Uh, and like Natalie said, we have quite a few that are starting to retire and the retention and everything else. So uh, our best way of getting uh, young technicians that are talented is, is kind of grow them with their own and, and get them through our apprenticeship program. We're also the largest John Deere dealership in, in Iowa, and we've been in business for over 40 years and we've expanded multiple times in those last, uh, last six years. So what I like to tell apprentices is you have the ability to come in and work at one location as, uh, as an apprentice and work your way up into uh, more of a senior technician with the opportunity for uh, career growth, whether that's to a shop foreman, to a service manager, to a corporate service person. Um, and then sometimes our techs even maybe move over into the AMS side or even sales uh, because they have that relationship with um, the customers that they've been working on their equipment. And then we've been a registered apprenticeship program since August of 2018. Uh, and it was a very easy process uh, for us to uh, get into the registered apprenticeship program as ours is a little unique as we've tied ours into the John Deere tech program. Um, that's a three-way partner between uh, a dealer, a community college and John Deere corporate. And so our, uh, our students actually have two different uh, community colleges that they can choose to go to, um, to get the um, recommended or the required uh, classroom training. And, uh, and the other thing, the reason why we did uh, the registered apprenticeship is it allows us to have structured on the job training as that's one of the requirements. And this allows, um, allows us to have technicians that are certified uh, and proficient in multiple different areas of our company um, from motor overhauling to um, working on combines and sprayers and planters and combines uh, and tractors. Uh, so that employee, that apprentice is more valuable to us as a company because we can send that one apprentice out to a service call and he can work on every piece of equipment of that customer instead of maybe having to send two different techs out to that same uh, service call uh, to work on multiple pieces of equipment. And in this way, we're mo more well-rounded in our shops. Um, so when we're in the shop and, and we're getting behind on some pieces of equipment, we can put that apprentice on different pieces of equipment and feel confident that they're proficient uh, in that area and get that job done um, correctly. So a little about the Ag Tech program. Like I said, there's two community college choices. The one in Iowa is at Northeast Iowa Community College in Calmar, and the other one uh, is at, South, or at Southeast Community College in Milford, Nebraska. Um, again, the apprenticeship program, we've been able to use their curriculum that they have uh, to uh, be able to train the students on in the classroom. 
And then when they're at school for about the 15 months, uh, they're half time in the classroom and half time in the shop. And, and a lot of these students um, are the high school students that we're, we're recruiting uh, for this program are the students that maybe don't like the traditional high school setting. So this fits perfect with them when they can come in and only have about two hours of classroom time and then two hours of shop time every single day when they're at school. And then they also have that on the job training uh, where you, last uh, slide you saw uh, the proficient areas that we do pay. Uh, we pay an hourly rate for these students. And as long as they keep on getting more proficient, they have those pay increases. Uh, but this is all full time, 40 plus hours each week when they're back doing their on the job training uh, during school. Um, and, then, and then after they graduate as well from uh, the program up there. The other nice thing about the John Deere Tech program is they already come out John Deere core certified. So they come out certified in hydraulics, electrical and service advisor, which are the three core classes um, for those students or for those apprentices. So what that means is we could send that apprentice right to um, Davenport or Egan, Minnesota, where there's a John Deere training facility and have them get trained on even more equipment. So for instance, John Deere just rolled out a new X9 combine. We could send that student right up to the program and learn more about the X9 combine and come back and start servicing even more. Um, and then the last thing they come out certified is air condition certified as well. So kind of how we recruit for our, uh, our apprentices is we have multiple lot of different areas we go to. Um, I go out to high schools and present. Uh, I also bring high schools in to our into one of our conference rooms and present. We do tours. Um, it's a big, I, it, I feel it's, it's huge to get the students into the shop so they can kind of see what the, the shop looks like and, and see different piece of equipment that's being worked on. And then the last thing is we're uh, active at career fairs as well as just kind of getting our name out there, our apprenticeship program um, as well. And so if a student is interested in becoming an apprentice, um, again, we really like to work towards those high school students. Um, they have to fill out a form on our website and that notifies me that they're interested. And we also have a quality pre-apprenticeship program, uh, more so for those juniors going into their senior year that have expressed interest in it. And, and we do uh, interview for every single position uh, as it is a, it's a big deal for us and a big deal for uh, that student. So we have phone interviews, on-site interviews, and as long as they make it through that, we have an on-site working interview uh, for our quality pre-apprenticeship program. Uh, and then after they do the uh, quality pre-apprenticeship program uh, for about four or five, six months, then if uh, they still feel like it's a good fit for them and we feel like it's a good fit uh, to move forward into our apprenticeship program, then we bring in their parents and we sign um, all of our paperwork and everything else. And we post it on our social media uh, for some marketing and we put it in a newspaper uh, and everything else. Cause it's a big deal uh, for these students. Uh, the benefits of a registered apprenticeship program for us and, and kind of why we did it is one, we get a lot of local recognition and national recognition. So anytime that um, for instance, today uh, we get to talk about our apprenticeship program uh, and then anytime that we have a picture, we can take it and send it to Gear, or Greer at the Department of Labor and she'll put it in their uh, bulletin. Um, like Amy said, apprentices receive national certification. Obviously our goal is to keep our technicians local and at our uh, 19 ag locations that we have them at, but we also understand life happens. You know, they might get married and they might move away or do something else like that. They can at least take this and uh, obviously there's John Deere dealerships all across the nation they can take that to a John Deere dealership and that other dealership would know that they've been well-trained and be able to fit right in and start working on pieces of equipment. And then local connections. Um, again, this is really big uh, opportunity for us to stay with all the local schools, or the high schools that we're talking to. It's also opened many doors uh, for other people uh, to, that have been able to, for instance, IJAG, um, they, they've, I've, got to know through IJAG better, and that's Iowa Jobs after graduation. Uh, and that's a kind of another connection to be able to go and present a, another group of students that might not necessarily hear about this through a traditional uh, high school classroom. And then we've already talked about the structure on the job training. And then the age limit for students, becoming a registered apprenticeship program has allowed students into our shops even earlier. Yes, we still have some limitations of what students can and can't do. Uh, for us, but it's allowed us to get into those high schools, to start our high school intern, to kind of get them through our process, to keep them with us and grow them through our company um, and, and, and continue to grow our workforce. And then another thing is the grant opportunities in Iowa. There's plenty of grant opportunities that we can 
uh, as a registered apprenticeship program, you can apply for to help cover training costs, um, whether that's tuition or anything else, or, or your mentor, you can repay some of your mentor um, for uh, helping with that mentee. And then the last thing is the data. So as I said, we started our registered apprenticeship program in August, 2018. So these numbers um, committed are for our August start dates. And so you can kind of see beforehand, uh, before we had a registered apprenticeship program and, and started getting out talking about it, we had some kind of low numbers. And then 2019 was kind of our first full year of recruiting for it. We had 13 students enrolled. And then 2020, we have 14. And then currently right now, I have 13 that are signed up to go to the school in August of 2021 with a couple others in interview process right now to start the on-site working interview. So we feel as a company, this has been very valuable for us to continue to grow um, our technician and service customers um, that we have with our market share out there. So I think we have question and answers at the end. So it's my turn to uh, introduce David from John Deere and he's gonna talk about their uh, high school internship opportunities. Thank you, Tyler um, and Natalie. Hey everyone, thanks for joining us today. I'm David Ottavianelli. I work on uh, strategic workforce projects and helping gain some, uh, some talent into that pipeline earlier in the process here. So like uh, Natalie and Tyler showed you, those were company sponsored or sponsored within their organization apprenticeship programs. I'd like to spend some time right now to show you um, in, in like them, we have multiple programs at Deere to include an internal sponsored program. But I'd like to spend a little bit of time talking to you about high school registered apprenticeship programs and how they work in a business perspective from that. Similar to Natalie and Tyler, next slide, Amy, please. We conducted a workforce study over the long term, five to 10 years out, and we knew that we needed to do something differently to help attract talent, to fill the workforce needs at our local factory locations to include the supply base. You can see here of our respective major factory locations of what those needs would be, given that area, what we needed to do differently to get there. There were two main action items that we focused on that the study said. One, increase that student candidate pipeline. Really those students that are gonna complete their high school diploma, but may not go on to a four year degree, how do we get them attracted to these types of roles and aware of these roles? And another one, military transition programs and how do we leverage organizations like the Department of Defense Skillbridge Transition Program and Home Base Iowa to help attract talent to our local areas. Next slide. So this top action item of increasing student uh, pipeline really uh, focuses on establishing that relationship with students earlier on through the process to include a starting as early as eighth grade or even sometimes earlier. And we have a community outreach team that really shows, hey, what this is about from a manufacturing perspective and what are those opportunities in showing the students that path in that, in that um, those milestones. Is also partnering with key community stakeholders. And that includes the high schools, the community colleges and local businesses. And at the end, you can see here on the bottom of this uh, pipeline and this pathway, considering all options for students to include a certificate, two-year degree and a four-year degree. Next slide, please. So at John Deere, we partnered up with, um, after benchmarking, I'll give credit to Pella School District and of course, the state of Iowa for setting these programs in place, but we benchmarked uh, Pella School District with Davenport and North Scott, and we all decided that we were going to pilot this program in 2019 in the Quad Cities area. So we started with nine students from those two schools with four business partners. And we did a signing day on uh, 2 May, like Tyler had talked about, in 2019. And... Um, what we really underestimated was the emotion of the parents involved in this. Um, it was an incredible event. You can see some comments here from Nick Kilker, North Scott student, who was actually an IJAG student prior to this and is actually in a, a different uh, skilled trades program right now. So just complete development of that student would be a great example of these programs. Next slide, please. 
So during that pilot program, we learned a lot. A couple of key lessons learned that company student match is important, right? So going through that interview process and allowing both parties to feel comfortable with each other in doing so. So we start that about that January, March time period. We were able to answer as a business, a lot of questions from HR policies, bringing students into the factory under the age of 18, insurance, et cetera, with that. We actually created a yes, you can doc document that covers the top 10 questions that businesses typically have about high school registered apprenticeship programs and how you can make them work. Another area we saw was our current employees welcome the students and uh, we're fighting over them to mentor them as they were in, in their process of the work-based learning element of this. The students did a great job. They want to learn, they want to do more. They overall had very strong technical skills and we saw incredible behavioral competency development. There's 26 behavioral competencies that they're accountable for from showing up to work on time, communicating, working together as a team, following instructions, et cetera. And by the time they finished um, their high school graduation and haven't even completed the program yet, they're ready to enter the workforce. And we saw some great results in that. Next slide, Amy, please. So we started with that pilot program in, uh, in, in the Quad Cities area with the two schools, nine welders total, six of them were at Deer. This year, in the midst of the pandemic, we're happy to say that we're able to continue and sustain this. In the Quad Cities area, we added Rock Island High School and Moline High School. Moline High School actually has a CNC program, Rock Island has welding. And we've expanded to Dubuque, Waterloo and Green uh, School Districts. So there's 19 total high school apprenticeships at Deer. Within the Quad Cities alone, right now between CNC and welding and about nine business partners, there's 29 students that are engaged in this apprenticeship program that are um, um, at this point in the work-based learning element of this. We feel that this is a long-term potential to get a local talent pipeline of students coming into our factory locations around the areas of welding, CNC, and we're actually gonna start a quality pre-apprentice on advanced manufacturing, basic skills, and we think we can implement that in three of the large communities starting out and potentially expanding that. Next slide. So how do you get this started and what are some of the different things that you do? Once again, the schools are the sponsors of this. So having that discussion with the school's administration is a critical element of that. When we did our study and then we talked to the schools, it was a perfect win and a match of, hey, we need this talent and the students were, were available for that. So it was easy to have those conversations. Uh, the next thing you do is you get Greer involved. Uh, Greer Sisson is a great advocate from the Department of Labor. Um, she is willing to help. She can cre create draft standards rather quickly um, to help get you going and help you understand that a great resource and has been instrumental in making this happen. And then you determine that cadence and you meet with those key stakeholders on a plan, the schools, the businesses and the community college. You set up that meeting cadence and you do your backwards planning. We have timelines and guidance. All of that is on the STEM web page that shows all those tentative timelines. And you target that first work-based learning upon completion of their junior year after graduation, that May, June time period. You don't have to recreate this. You can leverage all the best practices that are in schools today and in businesses. You can call us. We can help you with that. We do a lot of different uh, reviews with folks. It's easy to do. And the last thing is give it a try and start small. So uh, conduct a pilot and then grow up from there. And Greer will tell you, all you need is one student and one business to establish that program. You can learn a lot and then you can grow it from there. Next slide. Like the governor and Tyler and, and Natalie all mentioned, um, you know, and Bill Gates does, does an awesome amount of work on this. And he has a video that I put in the presentation here. It really two things. And it talks about all the things that we just brought up about fostering local talent is way more efficient than trying to bring it in 
in utilizing that talent that's there. And then realizing that these are uh, these students are incredibly intelligent, hardworking, looking for someone to give them an opportunity to believe in. And uh, once again, we believe that this is an excellent opportunity to help increase that talent pipeline. I'll hand it over back to Amy. Perfect. Well, we had some great examples of how registered apprenticeship programs can work in the state of Iowa. Um, now let's talk a little bit about funding. Um, just to give you an update, funding can take about a half an hour just to go through all these funding opportunities. So I'm going to give you extreme high level view. Um, we have put uh, websites on um, this uh, document for you so you can do some further research and get in contact with the subject matter experts. Um, we will have this PowerPoint presentation sent out to all the attendees as well. So we have a lot of federal and state funding that is available for registered apprenticeship programs. The items to the left um, with Iowa Register Apprenticeship Program um, Act 15B, Future Ready Iowa, um, Iowa Register Apprenticeship Development Fund 15C, and the Future Ready Iowa Employer Innovation Fund are all state funds. Um, so underneath 15B, um, it's a formula fund that's based upon um, registered apprentices and contact hours. So it depends on how big your program is, is how big the award is every year. Um, it is a $3 million um, pot of money, but it all just uh, moves around due to formula and that pie model. So additional information can be found at www.iowa eda.com slash backslash grow backslash apprenticeships backslash. Um, next one is Future Ready Iowa Development Fund 15C. These are competitive grant funds that are eligible for high demand occupations. So an occupation must be on the list first in order for you to apply and have that program registered. Um, if you have two occupations or more, you can get up to 50 50, five zero um, thousand dollars um, for your registered apprenticeship program. With 15B and 15C, these applications, you have to have a registered apprenticeship program registered with the US Department of Labor. And applications are taken in from January 1st to February 1st each year year. And um, both funds are administered through the Iowa Economic Development Authority. Kyle, um, who did the great introduction at the beginning, is the administer for both of those programs. Future Ready Iowa Employer Innovation Fund is competitive grant funds to help RA sponsors to carry out creative solutions um, to address um, workforce needs. So that you have to submit a plan and you have to have um, additional information to back up um, if you are able to apply for the Employer Innovation Funds. You can find additional information at futurereadyiowa.gov slash innovation. We also have two uh, federal funds that are available. The state expansion grant of 2020, we have business incentives for $1,500 per an apprentice that an, a sponsor or the apprentice can apply for in the areas of healthcare, agriculture, and industries affected or um, uh, apprentices affected by COVID. Um, there is additional information regarding this, but um, the funds can be used for um, OJT, RTI, and supportive services. And then last but not least, we have the Urban Institute, $1,000 per an apprentice funds for tech occupations. Urban Institute is a national organization that is administering these federal funds. Um, so their website pretty long, but detailed um, in on the, on the screen that you can find additional information about Urban Institute. But all we want to say on funding is there's a lot of funding out there, but we want to make sure that registered apprenticeship is the right road um, for your employer or for your high school in order to set up the program. So we'd be love, we'd love to talk to you further about education and funding um, uh, as we move forward. And now we're going to be switching over and showing you a great video that was produced um, by multiple registered apprenticeship sponsors, since we know that um, with COVID-19, uh, everything looks a little bit different. So we wanted to highlight different sponsors across the state to show what we were doing in registered apprenticeship in Iowa. I chose the apprenticeship program because I really enjoy working with my hands. I'm able to make money while I'm learning a, a lifelong career, a trade that can't be replaced. What I like best about doing electrical work is that I get to learn something new every day. 
it's come to the job that I like every day. Um, it's not the same boring stuff over and over again. And I just learn something new. You learn from people who have done the job before you. So you get to learn your career from those who have been in the field. I wanted more of a long-term plan. Like, of course, being a CNA, you help people, but I learned more of like how to empty draining tubes, how to take out staples and stitches, and just more of the, what I like to call the fun stuff. <laughs> it made me want to further my career even more to become a nurse because I really liked the, that side of the job. The cool thing about the Egg Tech program is it doesn't really matter where you come from. Um, and what you know going into the program. They do a really good job of shaping you into the technician you need to be to be successful in this field. What I would tell someone who doesn't know anything about the Ag Tech program would be that it's a good hands-on learning experience and I have a guaranteed job lined up. Tuition and fees are paid for through VanWall, which was a good deciding factor between, for me anyway, between going here and some other diesel program where I'd have to pay for myself and then find a job afterwards. All the businesses in the trades are looking for people for help. Uh, they, they're, they're looking for employees. We have over a hundred different companies that actually talk high for their training and uh, are, are partners in our apprenticeship program. Hopefully one day in the future, either to own my own business or become a supervisor, be doing running jobs is what I'd love to do. Comes with time and that even though you don't know anything right now, the same people who've been doing this for 40, 50 years started in the same spot that you did. Okay, thanks everybody. Uh, with that, I think we'll uh, open up at this point to our Q&A time. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, I've tried to answer a few along the way uh, that have come in. And uh, if you do have any questions that you haven't asked yet at this point, uh, feel free to enter those in the Q&A or chat. Uh, Molly, anything that we want to pick up and, and give the group an opportunity to answer? As Molly is looking through the questions and answers, I have put our presenters and um, Director Greer Assistant's um, email up on the screen, just in case that any of you would like to jot down an email address or two uh, following this presentation. Yes, uh, we did have a few questions that were already answered, um, but from the questions that we've had in the slides, one moment. First one is, is this webinar only directed for high school students? No, it is actually directed to all individuals. Um, Unity Points um, program is, um, is outside of high school registered apprenticeship program. And we have lots of um, registered apprenticeship programs across the state of Iowa that are for um, individuals that are after high school and adult learners or career changers. Great, thank you. The next question, are these truly registered apprenticeship programs or are they industry recognized apprenticeship programs or IRAP? These are all registered apprenticeship programs um, that are registered through the US Department of Labor and goes through um, the components, the five components of registered apprenticeship program that we um, addressed earlier in the slides. All right, thank you. So 
the next question, this may have been answered in the Q&A already, but this will be useful for everyone else. Do companies get financial assistance to pay the students while they are in the program? Or is this an out of, is this out of the business's budget? So Amy, I'll take that. Yeah. Um, so on the financial slide, if you looked at, if you go back to that, Amy, you'll see on the um, on the on the right hand side are all the elements that businesses will get incentives from the from the SAE 2020 business incentives and the Urban Institute. If you have if you're hosting Apprentice, but if you're sponsoring a program and you're a business that sponsors a program, then you're eligible for the funding on the other side of that through the state and other different agencies. Correct me if I'm wrong, Amy. You are correct. So it depends if you're a sponsor, if you're a sponsor, you can get funding on all this. And if you are a participant in hosting folks, then you there's incentives to uh, on, on the right hand side. Yep. And we have experts in the field to help you navigate the funding, um, the funding, all the funding streams that we have um, for you as a sponsor or for your apprentice themselves. All right, the next question is about hours um, and how students are clocking the hours. So this is the question, are students clocking hours um, in pre-apprenticeship hours and which will then be applied to apprenticeship, um, how will that be formalized with an employer? Tyler, do you want to take that since you have a quality pre-apprenticeship program at Van Wall? Yeah, so the quality pre-apprenticeship uh, students are not clocking in on jobs uh, necessarily when in that first four to six months. They're just working alongside one of those technicians and really kind of helping out uh, what they can uh, what they can do and everything in the shop. And then once we move them into our apprenticeship program, um, then they start clocking in on, on the jobs that they're assigned uh, through service advisor or anything else like that. So we can kind of monitor how long and how efficient they're taking on uh, that piece of equipment along with the senior technician. All right, thank you. Next question. The question is about age. Um, the question was, did I hear them say that apprenticeships or apprentices could work in factories under the age of 18? Please elaborate. David, do you want to take that one? You bet. Yeah, you bet. Yeah. So uh, we did a lot of research on this. And as long as they're registered in the Department of Labor registered program, you can have an employee uh, under the age of 18, older than 16, work in, in your factory environment with the exceptions of two things. One, they can't operate motorized vehicles, fork trucks, and they cannot op operate overhead hoists. All these guidelines are outlined in Child Labor Law 101 and also in the DOL Registered Apprenticeship Program guidelines. That was a big lesson learned because we thought the same thing at first and actually had to change some of our internal policies to adjust that age to reflect if a student is in this program, then they're eligible to work. And I'd also add um, to David's comment, we have uh, earnandlearniowa.gov slash educators. We have a copy of that child labor law uh, attached um, to that website as well. So you can take a look um, at that, uh, that direct ruling. All right, next question. Is there a list of all programs in Iowa available? So we do have a list of all registered apprenticeship sponsors in the state of Iowa on earnandlearniowa.gov slash sponsors. Um, we can put in the chat um, a list of apprenticeship occupations that are available um, in the country that over the 1400 or 1400 uh, occupations. Um, but if you're looking at the programs that are registered in the state, the earn and learn Iowa is going to be your great resource. The next question is how do I find out a registered apprenticeship program in my area. 
If you go to earnandlearniowa.gov slash sponsors, you can um, do a radius uh, lookup uh, around where your area is. You can also take a look at occupations. Um, you can look at your city. There's a lot of different ways to do the searches on uh, that website. It's an interactive site that you can check. The next question is about um, apprenticeship programs in a different uh, industry than we discussed. The question is, what about apprenticeship programs that are based in the office or desk, um, I guess, desk work, uh, such as computer aided drafting, as opposed to, say, shop floor based mechanical drafting? I can take that, uh, Amy. So um, you can apply a registered apprenticeship program to any of the skills, as long as you understand the competencies that are needed. There's a guideline for that. For instance, Davenport school districts, and we're working with them to develop a potential software engineer apprentice program that would lead into this and a number of different things. So it's possible. Um, it depends upon the need of the local area and the business, and then the schools, if they have the ability to teach that. If there's a match, call Greer. She can, she can tell you if, uh, if we can do it or not. Great, thank you. The next question, is there help for communities near state borders to allow students um, to participate from out of state, especially in those border communities? I'll take that, Amy. Yes, um, so once again, call Greer. <laughs> She's gonna hate me for this, but uh, so for instance, I'll give you an example here. We're in the Quad Cities, but Rock, uh, Rock Island County is under her jurisdiction. So we have students from Moline Rock Island High School and those, those schools have actually registered through the Iowa program and uh, they're, they're sending students to work on both sides of the state. So yes, it is possible. Um, Greer can give you all the complete details. She knows it by county. Uh, we don't have any additional questions right now, um, so we still have at least two more minutes. Well, I would just make a plug. Um, I know I mentioned earnandlearniowa.gov several times, but that is going to be uh, a one-stop shop for job seekers or career seekers, along with educators and employers alike. Um, it is a website that is connected um, with all of our partners across the state of Iowa with different agencies, along with the Office of Apprenticeships. So a lot of great resource resources are on that website, along with all the connections of who you need to speak with. Um, about starting up a program and learning from the from the masters. So um, earn and learn Iowa.gov is going to be one that you'd want to bookmark for a registered apprenticeship in the state of Iowa. Thank you, Amy. We do have another question that just came in. Are there are there any plans to make more components virtual or digital in the nature of the current working and learning environment that we are in? Yes, Office of Apprenticeship has been working um, really, really strongly with um, employers and related training instruct instructor providers um, to ensure that all um, social distancing and COVID requirements are being met, are being met and um, moving everything to online as much as they can. We also received additional guidance from the U.S. Department of Labor um, stating to help um, with sponsors with the RTI and moving everything as much as we can to the online system. So yes, 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 yes. That wraps up our questions right now. Okay, <clears throat> thanks once again, uh, everyone for joining us today. Uh, as Amy mentioned, we will be providing the presentations to everyone that registered for the webinar. We also plan to have this webinar available uh, for viewing for if there's others within your organization that may wanna see it and weren't able to make it today. Uh, and we'll have that available via Iowa Workforce Development's uh, site, as well as um, the Iowa Economic Development Authority site as well. So uh, take a look for that as well. And again, thank you very much for your time. And uh, 
we appreciate you spending a little bit with us today to uh, learn more about registered apprenticeship and help us celebrate the week that we're in. So have a great day, everyone. Thanks.